Hello again and welcome back to another video. So in this video, what I wanted to do is I wanted to briefly discuss the significance of knowing what frame rate you want to shoot at and how that will impact your overall video. So whether it be shooting at 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, or 120 frames per second, you got to know why you're using each one. And I know personally, when I first got into filmmaking, I didn't really have a clue. I bought a camera that had the capability of shooting at a higher frame rate. And I thought that was super cool. You would see a lot of slow-mo clips on social media that just make everything look very dramatic and cinematic as well. And so I thought, yeah, I'm gonna shoot everything at 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second without even putting any thought into why I was shooting at that frame rate. And then what I would do is I would take those clips, drop them into a 24 frame per second timeline, and then probably only slow down a couple of those clips. And with the rest of them, I would try to basically have them converted back to 24 frames per second. So the issue with that is because it was shot at a higher frame rate, it's never going to fully replicate that natural 24 frames per second look. So if you're shooting at a higher frame rate, you're also having to shoot with a higher shutter speed. And this is going to naturally cut out a lot of motion blur. And when you try to dial that back to 24 frames per second in your timeline, it's going to create this jarring effect that lacks motion blur. It just feels a little robotic and it's not easy on the human eye. So I decided to learn a little bit more about frame rate and shutter speed and how those correspond to create the look that you're wanting to achieve. The general rule of thumb when it comes to shutter speed and frame rate is you want the shutter speed to be about double that of the frame rate. And what that means is if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be at about 50. Obviously it varies slightly from camera to camera. And if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, that shutter speed, it better be up to about 120. And at 120 frames per second, the shutter speed should be about 240. And so you kind of get the idea. It's the shutter speed is just going to be double that of the frame rate. And that will provide the viewer with the most cinematic possible looking shot from that given frame rate. So now that we've established that, I should mention that our human eyes tend to view the world at about 24 frames per second. So this enables us to see sufficient motion blur uh, and make everything visually appealing. As I mentioned earlier, if you decide to use a higher frame rate shot and then try to reduce it down to 24 frames per second, it no longer has that motion blur. Plus it has those additional frames condensed down to that 24 frames per second. And like I said, it results in a very jarring effect. So just plan a little bit ahead and be mindful as to why you're using a higher frame rate and what the impact that this will achieve in your video. So you don't wanna just pile on countless clips shot at a higher frame rate simply because it looks more cinematic and cool. Because what you're gonna find is if you're shooting the majority of your content at a higher frame rate, it's gonna significantly slow down the overall narrative and feel of the video itself. The viewer's probably gonna get bored. Sure, they might think it's cool for the first couple clips, but if you're shooting everything at a higher frame rate, it drags everything out far more than it really needs to be. What I find is that shoot most of your story at 24 frames per second, especially when it comes to, you know, real life events. This provides a far more immersive experience for the viewer. They basically will almost feel like they are there with the main character and they'll get a better grip of what's going on in the story. Another perk of shooting at 24 frames per second is that you get the real time audio as well. So you don't have any syncing issues in post. Whereas this, if you're shooting at some of these higher frame rates, you're not getting the real time audio. And despite your best efforts of syncing up audio and whatnot, it's there's still gonna be moments where it is slightly off. And that's kind of a distraction when you're watching a video. I don't know about you, but if I'm watching a video where the audio is off even by a couple of milliseconds. It really just like 
takes away from the visual experience. Be mindful, shoot a lot of your story at 24 frames per second. When you're using something like 60 frames per second, typically that is best used for slowing down everyday human activities, such as going for a jog or skateboarding with a friend. It just adds that extra dramatic effect to the video and really kind of evokes certain emotions in the viewer. And when used tastefully, it can actually really add to your story and your overall narrative. So typically when you're shooting at 120 frames per second, this is excellent for taking out a lot of the motion blur from certain elements that the human eye actually can't pick up on such as let's say when you're striking a match and there's a bunch of sparks emitted prior to the ignition of the actual match this is something that the human eye just overlooks because the, mo the motion is too fast for us to actually fully pick up on so shooting certain elements at 120 frames per second can result in a very unique perspective that otherwise would be obscured at a frame rate of 24 frames per second so I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I wanna keep it a little bit more concise and to the point than some of the other videos. And this is a pretty straightforward topic. Hopefully you learned something from it. Obviously for a lot of people, this is just gonna be a refresher. And if I missed something, just let me know in the comments. But yeah, hopefully you're doing well and I appreciate the ongoing support with this channel. And you guys are amazing. Couldn't do it without you. I truly mean that. And I'll see you in the next video.